Hierarchical drop downs can come from a few different methods. So for example, you can have this or you can have autocomplete and then you can type or you can have first choose one, then choose the other, but it only has items in that specific place. So I'm going to show you a few methods how to do this um, in Excel, but that might lead to other ancillary products like Microsoft Forms and Google Sheets as well in Excel Online. So let's get started. My name is David Benayim and I make lots of videos on how-to tutorials on all sorts of business technology from PowerPoint to Power BI to Excel to Outlook and Teams. Excel has an online product that allows you to edit it on a web browser for free. Just go to Google, type in Excel Online and then you'll be prompted to, to sign in either with your work or school account or with a personal account if you want to use it for free, as long as you have a Microsoft account. So um, here I've got the place and the location. Now this is a feature that only works with Excel Online. It's got autocomplete, which is pretty awesome. So you can select this output, go to data and then data validation, choose a list and the source, you can enter it like that, press OK. And then you can choose from a drop down or special in Excel Online. If you start typing it, it will give you that restricted list of options. Although it only works for the first word, the first characters in the first word. So if I type in USA, it's not great. So this is effectively a really good solution for a two level hierarchy, but a three or more level hierarchy, this isn't great for. Google Sheets however, changes that. So I have a list in Google Sheets and I'm going to select on here, go to data and data validation and choose a list from a range. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to leave a lot of blanks at the end. Reject input is what I prefer using in Google Sheets for this. And now if I start typing Europe, it does give me the Europe options. But if I type in A, it gives me all the options where the continent starts with A or where the country starts with A, Albania, or where the city starts with A, Amsterdam. And as I keep typing, it keeps giving me those options. So autocomplete works in a number of different ways. It can look for not just the first word, but any separate word, it will look through that list. So I use this system of having sort of greater than to separate them out. And this is why I use Google Sheets for a lot of my data validation and a lot of my data input spreadsheets. I have another video that I'll link to, which goes through way more validation on spreadsheets because there's so, so much more than this feature. So here I am in Excel and I've got the lists with going across the continents and going down the countries. And this is my data entry blue table. So I want to be able to edit things in here, but only from the lists. And once I choose Europe, I don't want to be able to then choose USA or Peru. I want only the items in Europe and country. Uh, then we have a third level of the hierarchy as well, where I want to only choose the cities inside the country selected there. So firstly, let's set up the continent. So first click on this, go to data tab, and then data validation choose a list and then choose the source to be here. Now I normally try and leave a couple of ones at the beginning, a couple of blanks just in case it needs to grow. And then here I have all of my continents. Formula tab and then I'm going to choose define name, create from selection. Just the top row, press OK. And then just to give you an idea of what that does, this, if I look at my name box, is now Asia. This is now Europe. This is Americas. Notice that anything below that is not the exact one. And even if I only choose this, this is just C6 in there. I need to choose until the end of the named range that I gave it. So from here, now I can go into this second column and I can choose data and data validation. And I can go to a list. But the source, I'm going to type a formula equals indirect. And then I'm going to open my brackets and put just this cell there. I'm going to remove the dollar signs to make it relative and not absolute. Close my brackets, press OK. 
It says the source currently evaluates to an error. I'm going to press yes. That's because there's nothing in there. But if this one says Asia, this one then says the Asia countries. This one says Europe. This one then says the Europe countries. Great, working perfectly. Um, try and get your list sorted in alphabetical order so it becomes easier for the person to browse. You can then do city in the same way or have as many levels of the hierarchy as you want. Just remember that you need to name the range and then add the indirect formula. Then here I have the French cities. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to uh, go to my entire list and go to the insert tab and choose table. Press OK, make sure that's ticked, my table has headers. And then this is a great feature that is the most underused feature in Excel. You can change the formatting easily and it does lots of cool things with formulas. In the table design tab, I'm going to give it a name. So this is going to be the place table. And then I'm going to uh, use formulas within direct to link to this list. So firstly, I want to say that this is linked with special formulas. So if I go to equals and then select all of this, you can see that it says equals place headers. Now, because I have Excel with Office 365, that will give me the output on multiple cells. An earlier version of Excel might give you an error, but it still works for this next step. So if I go to formula text of this, this will give me that formula. And here I'm going to say equals the entire Asia column, including the blank. And that will give me all of these and equals formula text there. I'm just going to drag it down and that's equal place Asia. So a table by definition gives a name for all the headers and a name for all the columns. Equals place Europe will give me this equals place America will give you that. So a table also automatically grows. So as I add Australia into it, it di directly goes in there and now equals this is now equals place Australia. So I'm going to leverage the fact that it also grows in order to do the next step. So here I'm going to select continent and I'm going to go to the data validation, the data tab and then data validation choose a list. I'm going to say equals indirect open brackets. Now I've already copied this, so I'm going to paste it there, but I'm going to put speech marks before and after it. An indirect function can convert text into the cell referenced by that text. Press OK. And now it shows it to me like this. As I add something new, it will add something new. This is also convenient because I don't see the empty blank spaces like I did before. So uh, next we have country and city. So now I need to replicate this function that can change between whatever continent is pre-selected. So this can be Europe, this can be Asia. And here I'm going to say data validation list. I'm going to say equals indirect open brackets, speech marks. Now I start with whatever that starts with place and then open square brackets. Then I close the speech marks, press the and symbol, and then select this cell here, H6. Going to need to remove the dollar signs that come on by default. And then I'm going to close the ending of that. It closes with a square bracket. So and again to concatenate between text and uh, something in a formula, square brackets, and then close my brackets here. I will write these formulas in the description below. There we go. Now it works. And that works as well. Perfect. So that is a way to get it automatically growing. And also it automatically grows in this direction as well because the named range grows. So if I add in Sweden, then Europe will now have Sweden as well. So that grows in all directions. The only inconvenience is if you have a very, very different number of entries between each column. And I've just 
added a lot more countries in Europe there. This is now kind of inconvenient because there's all these blank entries and it doesn't really show me the useful ones there. Uh, the other restriction with this is that it only works with two levels of hierarchy. So I can't have continent, country, and city. I can only have continent and country this way. If I wanted the city to appear, I'd have to go back to the, the other method that I showed you here, which allows you to name the ranges there. Another method is using Microsoft Forms that populates an Excel spreadsheet. So here is an example of a form. So the person first chooses America and then gets countries in America, or if he chooses Europe, he gets countries in Europe. Then he selects it, presses submit, and that populates a spreadsheet. So this is something you need to start through Excel Online. Um, here is a blank Excel Online file that I just renamed, gave it a name location data. I can go to insert forms and choose a new form. So it populates with the name of that, but you can edit it. Add a choice question, and this is going to be continent, and then let's say Asia and Europe. Then I'm going to just press add new, and this is going to be Asia country, Cambodia. It gives you these pre-selected things. That's pretty good even knows that I'm doing this in Asia. Add new. So now we've got that set up. Then we need to add the branching. So in the first one, I'm going to click these three dots and choose add branching. So this is going to be go to Asia country. This is go to Europe country. And then in Asia country, I'm going to say all of them go to end of the form. Otherwise, it will ask for the next country as well. I don't have to do anything for Europe because that is the end. Press back. And now I can press a preview and then they choose that, choose that, press submit. Submit another response, choose that, choose that. And they get the hierarchical one there. If you want to share it, click the share button and then you can copy this link. If you want anyone inside and outside your organization to edit it, you can do that. I have another video on Microsoft Forms uh, that's really, really useful. What is important though, is that you do start from the Excel app. Don't start from forms in here. If you do that and you just do a new form, what ends up happening is that it is not linked to an Excel live file. It's only something that you can download the results for. Whereas this one, this has this icon there that says it can edit it open in Excel rather than download as you go along. Uh, so once you've done that, how does it look in the output? It comes up with an ID, start time, completion, what your details are, and that you have there. So what about if you want to have a column just for country? So this is a table like I showed you earlier in this video. So if I add a new column, the table also expands with the formatting. And I can say equals this cell and sign this sign. Because one of them will always be blank and then it gives me that reply. Now if I go back to my data, then I go back to Excel and I can see that it's automatically populating that and the column formula goes in. Note that you can do this in Google Forms, but uh, the formula columns in Google Forms in the same table don't work very well. You need to link it first to another table and then add on formulas. If you like this video, then I have plenty more videos on PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more.